morning, good evening, and good afternoon to all the geeks out there in Our Little Geekdom, and welcome to another Our Little Geekdom. <laughs> yes, we are episode number 30, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, we are episode number 40, so Les, you get the special one, you get the four zero. That was kind of planned that way. Excellent, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you get to your 40s, and it's like, like middle age for a podcast, that's yeah. good. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I hope it doesn't only last 100 episodes. That would suck. <laughs> but anyway, yes, uh, you guys all know him. You have met him before. You have seen him before on both this stream or this this um, podcast as well as the Geek Inspired podcast. It is the one, the only Les. And if you haven't seen him online, you've seen him running around at Icon like a crazy headless person <laughs> or any other event, just yes. running around and having a good time. Yes. Welcome once again to the the stream, Liz. How's things going, Cat? No. Uh, uh, good. Good I mean, evening, the podcast. Geeks. <laughs> the good podcast. Good evening, Geeks. Uh, it Hi. is a pleasure to be here, to be your fortieth. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so dirty. <laughs> Sounds so dirty. To know that there have been thirty-nine before me <laughs> make it, doesn't make me special. <laughs> Well, I mean, the fortieth episode—it's a big—it's a big episode. It's big, number. big episode. Big number. We should yeah. have cake. There should be cake. We, we, we had, had that on we Friday. Had, no, we had cupcakes oh, on Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, it was our five-year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> it was the SA Geeks five-year anniversary, so we were very, very chuffed about that one. We had cupcakes, we made cupcakes for the SA Geeks. Congratulations! Did all that stuff. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. it's awesome. But it's not about us. It's about, about the conversation. You. It's about the podcast. It's about you, Les. First, before we actually get anything going, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell our fans a little bit about yourself. For those who don't know you, obviously. For those who don't, know those who don't, because you now have an entirely new hemisphere audience. Uh, yeah. When, when <laughs> exactly. I last spoke to you. Uh, my name is Les Allen. I am an Australian transplanted to South Africa. Uh, in, in September, it'll actually be 20 years I've been mm. in South Africa. Um, I am now what you possibly could call a professional geek. Um, I like the business side of pop culture. So I enjoy uh, managing events. I enjoy the um, understanding the business of, of how pop culture works around the world, um, the things that drive it, and connect pop culture adherents and fans to to the mainstream. So my my company sometimes does work where we will help uh, mainstream businesses try and understand a geek audience, and we'll put events on for uh, for people that target geek audiences and get them and make sure that it's okay that they know how to understand who they're speaking to, and what they're dealing with. So yeah, currently working with business development in across a couple of spheres. Uh, very interesting projects coming up. Um, to do with blockchain, actually. Uh, not cryptocurrency, but the actual blockchain technology itself oh. and what it can do, uh, which is incredibly interesting. Um, yeah, that's... Otherwise, I'm not very interesting at all. You say, you say that... Well, that's just not true. Yeah, you say that, but you're well, you, have, <laughs> you, have, you have no credibility when you do your own press, so... Yeah, that's true. That's true. You really don't have any credibility if you do your own press. We know that from personal experience. <laughs> it's very difficult to actually advertise yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so we were actually talking about this off camera um, yes. about your your um, your your nickname, the 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 out the out um, Right. Explain that. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I sure. haven't pronounced it the French way because I'm I, I can't. So you can that's you fine. can give a good explanation as to why that is your first call sign and how you came up sure. with it. Well, Adramian isn't actually a real word. It's it's I derived it from the French word meaning the land beyond the sea. Where this came from, I started going online um, mid to late nineties, um, and the first place that I ended up was IRC, MIRC, Merc chat rooms. I don't know if you you guys dabbled, familiar? Um, I'm familiar. I don't really. I, I didn't really dabble, but I'm familiar. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I would hang out in chat rooms, just text on a screen, multiple multiple windows open up, multiple rooms open up at the same time, alt tab, switching through. Um, and I originally 
So my original first call sign was Barad, B-A-R-A-D, which I stole from Lord of the Rings. Um, and that was that was the first tag that I used um, online. It was the name of my first D&D character. Uh, then um, switched up, I started a new character. This one called it out Remian because a lot of the people that I were dealing with were from the United States or from Europe or from overseas. So I'm the guy from overseas, according to them. So <laughs> that was where, when I came across the name, I think it was an old, uh, was a term used in the Knights Templar stories, I believe. Um, but yeah, it's from the, the French word meaning the land beyond the sea. So I just corrupted it. Sorry to the French people as, as a whole. Um, yeah, but that's been, yeah, that's pretty much, it's my email address. It's yeah. That's <laughs> my online persona. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think the French people care. I, I think they're, they're, they're quite happy to know that their language is being utilized elsewhere and that other people <laughs> are using it to, you know, so like the Afrikaans, how they, 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 they find it quite interesting how, how um, we use Afrikaans up here. Mainly to speak cryptically no. so that other people don't actually understand us. It's a yeah. secret language. It's yes. a secret language so the Scots up here. don't understand you. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the mm -hmm. English, you can't, you can't really tell if the people are South African or not. So you can't really speak Afrikaans as openly there. You may, you may come across someone. So you'll be speaking Afrikaans and they'll, they'll look at you as, and then, and you just know that they know what you're saying. Do they so, give yeah. you that look? It's like, yeah. yeah, I know. But at our office, it's cool. Cause we can, we can speak Afrikaans and we can, we can skin it about people. I mean, not that we do. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. But you, it, it becomes quite obvious when, you know, someone switched to a different dialect. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Or, or sometimes we're just screwing around because at, at our office I do speak Afrikaans to Karen, but it's just to it's literally just to 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 screw around because I like sure. it. <laughs> I like it when people kind of no problem with messing around. I <laughs> have <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's it's really awesome. But um, yeah, so so um, I'm I'm pretty sure the French don't mind you 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 as you said brutalizing it. But um, I, I also, think they've got bigger things to think about. Yeah, I think they've got bigger things to worry about right now. I don't think that's one of them at all. So, <laughs> um, one of the things was also you said you said land beyond the sea. Funny enough, isn't that also out of uh, the Lord of the Rings, um, where where it's the undying lands? But one of the races called it the land beyond the sea. Yeah, it's the sa uh, sailing to the west or or to the yes. east or something. Yeah. Yes, it was. It was. I, I'm sure one of the races. I don't know which one, but one of them used to call it the land beyond the sea as well. Um, and if it is, that is actually pretty cool then, because then it's actually derived from the Lord of the Rings too. Yeah. I may be wrong, so anyone who, who who knows the Lord of the Rings better than me can can correct me. I haven't read the book mm -hmm. in years, so I actually don't remember. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a spot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, 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 yeah. it's not good though. It's not good that I haven't read the book in years. I must read it again. Um, along with the Silmarillion again. I haven't finished that book. It's very hard. I've never read the Silmarillion. It's very I've hard. Never... Yeah, I've, I started I've it. This. Yeah, I've started it, and I just I, every single time I start it, I just can't get through the first chapter. And I know that everyone says you've got to get through the first two chapters or something like that, and you'll actually get into the story. But I just I struggle. It's so hard mm -hmm. to understand what Tolkien was trying to say. But nonetheless, yeah. it's, 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 it, it will I will get there one day. One you day. No, it's there. easy to read and it's fun. Is I hate Fairyland. Yes. It's an image comic, actually. It's, an, it's a comic from 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 uh, Image. It's got a young good. made it, and yeah. it's about okay. Gertrude and her story of how she ends up in Fairyland and the Queen of Fairyland, and she just causes absolute havoc. She's like destroying Fairyland because she hates Fairyland. Right. Scotty Young's a talented it's very boy. Funny. <laughs> he is. He's got. He's, he's quite funny. I like. I like his work. His, we got. We got humor. the first one. Um, the the first I had Fairyland volume when Nerdnab was still a thing in South Africa. Oh wow! Yeah. And then yeah. recently I got volume two and three off of Amazon, and I'm busy reading those. Okay. It's actually mm. quite. It's still quite interesting. Very cool. Yeah, because of, of course we can get Amazon here. Sorry, South Africans. <laughs> we know it's very well, expensive down there. Amazon <laughs> is coming into Cape Town. They're currently causing some problems with their their site. Um, they're oh, no. looking at building <laughs> building in some marshland areas, which are not only kind of sacred to to the locals, but it will have a big effect on the ecology of the area. So yeah. there is. 
So Amazon is moving in um, and they're going to be based in Cape Town. They've already got, I mean, AWS in Cape Town has been around for at least Ages. a decade. So yeah. Amazon's yeah. got a presence here, but uh, I think the retail side of things is starting to, is starting to move. Yeah. No, it's, in, it's interesting to see where everything is going. You'll get um, more geeky things then. You'll be able to get so more much. geeky things. And it'll be a hell of a lot cheaper than having to spend 400 rand or 500 rand for a delivery. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm going to buy something for 20 rand. It costs me 400 yes. rand to deliver. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Grant said, if we had to, when we looked at the price, we, we, we earn in pounds and we were going, no, we're not paying that much for a delivery. <laughs> you guys remember Amazon Prime? Uh, yeah, we've got Amazon Prime as well. Because, um, yeah. well, I mean, I watch, I watch, um, what is it? Uh, Expanse. I love The Expanse. I think it's one of the, one of the coolest series. It's, it's really yeah. is. Whenever I watch it, I always just like, after after a few episodes, I'm like, I want to go and play X. <laughs> just for no good reason. I just want to sit down and fly spaceships. <laughs> yeah. No, The Expanse is amazing. I've just, uh, I've just finished the first book of the series. So it's interesting oh, really? seeing how uh, the books and the series mm. what's different what's the same it's very good yeah i believe um the witcher they, they wanted to actually move it over to 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 uh amazon as well and keep it as an amazon and a netflix thing together this is just hearsay wow. i'm not saying yeah. it's true it's hearsay okay. and uh, i'm not saying that it's true i, I just i hear things <laughs> i'm not always right believe me i'm not always right um, right. Actually, I think the majority of the time I'm wrong. <laughs> but again, it's hearsay. Um, sure. So uh, everyone listening and watching, don't what go on what I say. The Witcher series. Yeah. What do you think of the Witcher series? I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, when I realized what they were doing in season one by jumping around a bit, I was like, oh, this is this is interesting narrative stuff. Um, yeah. And Henry Cavill's a beast. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, I really, I really enjoyed it, and I'm watching interviews with Cavill where um, he's very respective, uh, uh, respectful of the game. But there yeah. are certain lines in the game he will never say in the show because those were the lines made by that voice actor. He said, yeah. out, "Out of respect, I won't." Uh, I thought about it, but some of the lines he'll just never do. So, being a geek and a gamer himself, uh, yeah, it's. It's very nice to see to see that aspect. Yeah, and the coolest thing about The Witcher is how Captain Obvious he actually is in the, the game. He is such an obvious. It looks like rain. Yeah. It's pissing down on his head. It's like, yeah, dude. Um, when did it yep. tip you off? Was it the first drop or the hundreds after that? <laughs> yeah, that's but it's lucky though, because um, apparently he's he's not. Apparently he's um, not going to be in the next season um, because of some work that he's doing for marvel or something like that yeah no they're replacing DC, him i don't know if it was confirmed confirmed but i read somewhere that they're replacing him with someone else uh, yeah, I heard well, there, there are there are stories that you can tell in that world uh i mean he's not the only witcher but i yeah, think exactly. if somebody if um somebody tried to replace him i don't think that would be yeah, that that would probably yeah. go down poorly. Yeah, there's there's no there's no real news from what I can see here. I'm looking at the the news reports. There's no real news that the, the, that he is leaving. Um, it is just mm -hmm. a rumor. I think I think people are just trying to actually get other you know other people in the the, the, the industry and other people who who watch mm -hmm. the show and the geeks out there trying to get the, piss them off by saying that he's not that he's leaving and that there's someone yeah. new coming. And I think they're just trying to actually stir up shit. Yeah, well, it wouldn't make sense for them to replace him now because he's no, not, he's not built this. such a good following and he's made the character his own. Yeah. Everyone likes him. He he's Geralt. Correct. He can't replace him. Yeah, I yeah. don't think. Yeah, I mean that's that's what Netflix is paying that money for. They're yeah, exactly. paying the money for him because he's of what he's done. Um, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and they made a huge success out of it. And if they if they they get rid of him now, they're gonna lose 
probably a very large fan base because a lot of people will probably just stop watching after a few episodes if they don't like if they didn't like the new actor that played him because you can't replace right. it's been tried before and it's failed every single time where they replace i mean the only time it ever actually worked is during the batman movies and that's because it's become like commonplace for them to replace batman and oh sorry and yeah and james bond of course you can't forget and james joker. bond gets tra- replaced all the time joker not so much um because he's not 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 a, 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 a super well known if you think about it it's, it's it. yeah that that's something that they've started with him though that, that's where that's where that's different um they started that with the joker but with james bond and batman it's been around for a while i mean the james bond after connery they, they started changing out to the the two that i don't like um mm-hmm. and then um the other james bond came out roger, roger moore and uh so roger moore timothy dalton there was i didn't like George timothy dalton Disney was there for one movie um, i didn't like him either it was um yeah. I, don't, I didn't like I those on two yeah yeah it was i didn't like him and then i thought he was really annoying um yeah. The 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 um, only James Bond I like Pierce is Pierce Brosnan, Brosnan but that's, that's because it. I grew up with the Pierce Bo- Brosnan James Bond. Yeah, she does not right. like she doesn't like Sean Connery, but I, I mean I will he's, always say he's not too bad, but I don't know. I just I don't know. There was uh, the, the, point, is... the point that you raised about um, replacing actors. Mm. There was uh, it was actually a really good uh, analysis. But it was done like twenty years ago to to say huh. that the character the the actor is not uh 007 the 007 yeah. is a rank and they've yeah, leaned exactly. in now in the last decade they they did they it have, with yeah. uh, towards actually i mean they did it with um brosnan uh where yeah. he had sean bean coming after him he was 006 006 yeah and yeah now you've actually got somebody took the rank of 007 um, so it's only the first three, I think, uh, 001 through to 009, that can yeah. actually have that license to kill. Um, and past, yeah, that's... past 10 onwards, they don't have it. So, yeah. yeah, the idea of James Bond being a shell that somebody can step into, I like sense, that. Yeah. But each of them can have their own foibles, yeah. their own dramas, uh, etc. So it, it just mm. makes it really easy to make it a shell that you can step somebody into to replace. Oh, very yeah. similar to um, Altered Carbon. Yes, yes. So Another good, good movie, Carbon, a show. Yeah, you've got sleeves, so it doesn't matter what actor plays it, you now have a plausible reason for changing the, the actor art, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, it makes perfect. I, I like Altered Carbon. They should have carried on with that, to be honest. Yeah, it was it was definitely a good show. I mean, one 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 season. I do like that they actually went beginning to end, and there was actually a complete mm-hmm. season. Um, so there was no cliffhanger or anything, because you know they weren't yeah. sure if the show was going to last or anything like that. And yeah. by the looks of things, wasn't it cancelled? Didn't they cancel? Season it? two had uh, see the season two they switched to Anthony Mackie as the actor. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then it was uh, wasn't as well received season two. Um, yeah. yeah. I think it. Um, yeah, it just wasn't as well received. Um, it was so, a bit meh. Yeah, it wasn't continued from that point onwards. But the yeah. books that it's based on actually have some amazing further stories that Takeshi Kovacs goes through. Yeah, I I think there's more that they could have explored as far as the ideas are concerned about what that tech what that tech actually means. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean to to have dynasties, familial dynasties that will just go for generations and generations, but it's the same mm. people that exactly. these, the whoever got access to this technology first, got a leg up in wealth and becoming entrenched as far as uh, wealth is concerned, and they can just yeah. live forever. Uh, it's yeah, exactly. an interesting idea. It is. I, I agree with that one. It's actually a very interesting idea. Uh, one of one of Kez's favorite movies, though, is um, is uh, In Time. She she, oh, yeah. she does like that mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, I like it's just the story behind it. Like, yeah. 
the acting wasn't that great, but the actual story of so, yeah, people buying time and they can live forever, that, yeah. that's mm -hmm. what actually got me. Yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's a really, that's an interesting angle. What, um, Elysium with Matt Damon, the same yeah. sort of concept of you have this uh, group of people, the haves, that have stuff and they can live on a space station where mm. you can be regenerated from having your head blown off <laughs> yeah. with memories intact completely. That's, you're now living forever and now Earth is just this thing that you mine. Um, yeah, exactly. So it's, um, it's, it's, I, I love these concepts. I, uh, I really enjoy the, uh, the discussions of the ideas of, well, who gets access to this tech first? Is it, does yeah. it become widespread usage? That's or is it just the oligarchs that get it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I get much. that. I get that. Because if you look at if you look at any of the stories behind that, it is it's like they they, they focus a lot on 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 the, the 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 who gets it and who doesn't get it and things like that. So from right. from from that standpoint, you kind of see where where they're going with the whole. Um, you know, it's it's only for one certain one certain sect. You know, it's I mean. Do, I'm gonna go into another different geeky one. Dune. <laughs> Dune, yeah. Who gets who gets oh. access to the spice first? You know. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's simple things like that. It's, it's, you know, most people wouldn't think about that because you know yeah. they probably haven't read the books. <laughs> but, I, I the book. stopped. I stopped after book two. I started reading mm. book three, and it just started oh, yeah. getting so whack. I. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, anybody who's read or knows the story beyond the first book can mm. probably relate. But it's just it gets Oh man, you yeah, that you can just Bodacious. replicate how many times is this? it's not Gurney Halleck. It is Gurney Halleck. No. No, it's Duncan Idaho. Duncan Idaho just is there forever. <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, yeah. So I try He's... to not acknowledge books. Three, He's like three, the Simpsons, three, he just doesn't three, stop. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it moves. Sorry, I'm not putting a stupid in the future. Um, yeah. And it's so far removed from the, that original book. Uh, mm. Yeah, I like, I like the first book. I like that it can be self-contained. Yes, yeah. there can be a story once um, Paul becomes emperor. Spoiler. Sorry. Spoiler book. Hasn't read it. Sixty year old book. <laughs> How do you spoil um, a sixty year old book? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, actually I haven't read it. So well, well okay. I, I do apologize because um it's one of the things I had a conversation with uh Ray Feist about it. Like how yeah. does he do with spoilers? We were talking um we were interviewing him during um at season four of Game of Thrones. Season two, season three, season four, something like that. Yeah. And we were discussing a particular incident that happened on the show. And I said, look, I have to declare spoilers. Um, and then the topic of spoilers came up. And he had an interesting viewpoint on that. That his books are constantly being published into new languages. He's getting new audiences that have yeah. never read his books, even yeah. though the first one came out in 1981. So yeah. you're now 40 years removed from when it first came out. Do you still worry about spoilers? And he went, well, I get new readers all the time. I get young readers all the time. So I'd, I'd try to avoid it and just speak in generalities. So yeah. I don't ruin these things for people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, personally, I, I read the book when I was a kid. Um, I started reading the book when I was a kid. The first book I ever read, obviously, was a magician. The very first book to come out from from the first, and right. it got me hooked on fantasy. You know, that was the whole thing. That was the book that got me hooked on fantasy. Um, mm -hmm. And and you know, as you know, you know, you, you were the one organized to actually have me meet him and sit down and have a little interview with him, which was like the most epic thing ever. Um, that is, uh, we were actually talking about this on, on, on Sunday as well. We were talking about how I got to sit down with, with uh, Feist. And it was one of my favorite moments of being yeah. an SA Geek was actually to sit down with someone who I idolized as a novelist and actually ask him questions about, you know, himself yeah. and as, as, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I agree, you know, I think it'd be, I think it's awesome that a kid can, can read a book and actually, you know, 
grow from that book and become who they are by reading that book well not become who they are but you know become the the the, the geek that they are as it were from reading yes. that, just that one book and um, yeah. i finally got my copy of king of ashes when i arrived here in the uk by the oh, way. Right. <laughs> well, even that it, it's not necessarily kids because again i didn't read it but I, I i didn't grow up reading a lot of books so i still right. need to get into it but you don't have to be a kid you can be a, a yeah, big of course. 30 something grown up and still not have read any of these books the reason get into it on the right side of my face just got illuminated is um i've just opened up a browser uh, there was an. Uh, you familiar with XKCD, the the web comic? No, no. But I can have a look. Spelt X K C D. XKCD is an amazing web comic. The guy, um, he just draws stick figures, but some <laughs> of his, <laughs> some of his comics are incredibly detailed. Like if you search, um, there's a comic that he did with plot lines, which as a Lord of the Rings reader, you'd, you'd really enjoy. It actually shows a line of every character as it trans as they move through the story and how they move through different parts. When they come close to another line, that's when those two characters are next to each other. Anyway, if you're not familiar with XKCD, go, I think it's Randall Munro is the guy's name. Um, but there's a particular, I'll even put it in, uh, I'll send it to you as a as a chat item. There is a comic that he did, just a just a two panel comic, that talks about the concept of ten thousand. Now, what he means by that is that he tries not to make fun of people for admitting that they don't know things. So, if you say, mm. "Oh, well, you've never read The Hobbit," it's it's a standard geek reaction because we get excited it's like somebody doesn't know the thing and. Oh, we kind of suspect that we might have an opening to talk, talk about the nerdy thing that we like. Yeah. But the, rather than making fun of people for things they don't know, he figures it out mathematically because for every for each thing everyone knows, using air quotes, by the time they're adults, every day there are on average 10,000 people in the United States hearing about it for the first time. And he mm -hmm. gives them that so then he gives uh, an example that's really awesome. so if i make fun of people i train them not to tell me when they have these moments and i then get to miss out on the fun and the example is diet coke and mentos what's that <laughs> oh yeah. man you and i we're going to the grocery store right now why mm. because today you're one of the lucky ten thousand. <laughs> yeah, I would that rather is, take really the good. approach of if somebody says they don't know a thing, be excited because you have the potential to introduce them to something and share mm -hmm. with them that they may end up enjoying. If they don't enjoy it, well then mm -hmm. no harm, no harm, no foul. But to exactly. say, oh, what do you mean you didn't? You, you've wasted your childhood. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. So, XKCD is a very good comic yeah. go back and read a bunch of them um yeah and i'd rather i'd rather help share something with people and put them on a path that they might they might find something they enjoy yeah i actually had that as a kid when i grew up because there were times when i was younger where they would say oh you haven't read this or you don't know this and then the the, the person would get all condescending like how can you not know that to say those people aren't in my life anymore yeah but because i'll i'll get to it when i get to it um there's other things that i need to do and experience and when i have the time i'll read the books or i'll go look at the comics or i'll watch the movie do you know how big this world is? there's so much exactly. stuff yeah my mother my mother actually had a very good point she was something that she yeah. actually said a very long time ago um well a very long time ago i mean it was when i was in my my 20s um my early 20s uh, you 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 get to a stage you, you, when you when you're growing up you're learning so you're learning new things as you grow up and when you're in school and you're in primary school you you don't know anything and you know you don't know anything but you're learning those things you start to understand what's going on you get to high school you become a teenager you know everything and no one can ever tell you that you don't know anything because you know everything you're a teenager that's how it works you know the world when you when you yeah. reach your 20s and you're in university you know everything and you think that you should tell everyone that they're wrong and you're right because that's how it goes 
Once you yeah. reach your thirties, though, you know fuck all, and you know you know fuck all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's actually what you've encapsulated. There's an old uh, there's an old saying about enlightenment. Mm. Before enlightenment, the the mountains are just mountains. During the path to enlightenment, the mountains are more than mountains. After enlightenment, the mountains are just mountains again. <laughs> that is actually kind of profound, but so true. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, listen, I'd love to claim it. It's not mine. No, no of course, I, of course. Not. Uh, I'm not always so wise. Yeah, I mean, scientifically, we know what mountains are. They're actually land that was squashed up like that due to uh, due to the, the the shifting the shifting crusts and all that shit we yeah, yeah we get that we, we we understand that as 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 people who, who who like for example myself who studied geography quite a lot when i was in school i know how right. that actually happened i know how mountains were formed so for me it was like yeah mountains is actually quite an interesting thing uh, it, it's mm-hmm. it's and it's actually amazing how they were actually made you know um and it's not just the thing is they're not just made by 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 shifting plates some of the mountains up here were created by volcanoes you know yeah so it's not always by shifting plates, but each one is created and it's always, and the great thing is each one of them is different as well. Not, not a single mountain is ever the same. And it's just like, yeah. it's, it's, it's really cool to actually be able to go and explore different kinds of things. I mean, I'm, I'm getting all, I'm getting all exploratory. Are and you boring. excited for Elden Ring like everybody else is? Am I excited for? Elden Ring. I, I'm excited <laughs> for the people that get to play it because right now my <laughs> workload is such that I I just don't get I don't get a chance to immerse myself like I want to. Um, yeah. I know that I uh, there's got to come a point, some, uh, hopefully this year, where I just say take a week and I'm going to go. You know what? Um, I tried to do it with Cyberpunk 2077. Um, yeah. I got like a good four or five days where I could just play and not have to do anything because I was actually yeah. in quarantine so there wasn't much else that I could do um, yeah. I'd love to uh, I would love to dive into Elden Ring um, I just it's I don't have the capacity right now mm-hmm. but all yeah, those people are going to get to play it I'm very envious if you recently started playing El- uh, not Elden Ring Cyberpunk um, but you obviously played reason. it pre um playstation 5 update and stuff. spoilers la, like la, la, la. He, no we're not talking about spoilers <laughs> we're not going to spoil anything because he i i finished it mm. and i know how it ends and she it. ruined it um, for me i know how it ends i didn't too. <laughs> i didn't ruin it i just said i don't like the ending um I know but you didn't how say do you that. feel about it so i started my first experience with cyberpunk was the role-playing game back in the early 90s mm. i mm-hmm. played cyberpunk 2020 I played um, Netrunner. Sorry to interrupt there. Net, see, Netrunner is amazing as well. Netrunner, mm-hmm. Netrunner and um, uh, and Cyberpunk, very, very similar. Um, yeah. Very similar statistically. And yeah. I story, had as as a, I, I had a, um, I have a very big soft spot in my heart for the Cyberpunk universe. One of mm-hmm. the first amazing things that we realized when we were playing this game was. Um, health insurance so depending on your level in the game you had uh and the the money that you had you had access to instant medical response teams now it's not giving anything away if they tell you right at the start there's a mission the the medical response team yeah the very beginning where the medical response team comes in now in the 2020 game it actually got to the point that if you were a, a rich uh, executive, a rich corp- uh, corporate, your response time on that was three minutes because they actually drop shipped a, uh, something from a satellite in geosynchronous orbits Jeez. that it would be three <laughs> minutes anywhere in the world. If you broke that card or somebody broke that card for you, it would be a guaranteed 180 seconds you would have medical assistance anywhere in the world because they were stationed <laughs> in orbit. So this was so what cyberpunk did for me was make me think about the future in Mm. different ways that the corporations were more important than the governments 
And mm. what would that mean? Where would these things go? So exactly, when I yeah. heard when I heard that um, CD Projekt Red were doing Cyberpunk, I was like, I am so wary because this thing is so is so special to me. And yeah. then when I saw it, it was amazing. Now I actually went and bought the gaming laptop to play it. <laughs> Jeez. So I didn't <laughs> okay. play it on PlayStation. I actually went and bought um, a Republic of Gamers laptop when I was in the States. And I loved it. I mm. it, it gave I was I felt a bit restricted because there were so many skills. Like there are more character classes in Cyberpunk than what they just give you. Yeah. Uh, but I understand that they've they've done more stuff with the game now that you can kind of combine classes a bit better, that they've built yeah. the world out. But it was it was great. Um, I really, because it let me, it let me experience the world again. Um, mm -hmm. And they'd taken the original 2020 storyline and organically moved it on. So um, mm -hmm. Johnny Silverhand was a character in the 2020 game, but he was yeah. very much a rebel. And to have him go forward and get his own storyline with Arasaka it was yeah I, it just it felt like putting on an old blanket that yeah. you really loved <laughs> and felt yeah. comfortable in mm. um but you got to got to wrap yourself in it and then explore something new yeah that old security blanket thing i know exactly where yeah. you're coming from i had i had silver hand um he was actually one of my cards when i played netrunner so oh, i had nice. silver, silver hand as a, as a card uh, I can't believe I lost my deck. It was it was like uh, I, I had it for so many years, and I loved that deck. And um, that is sad. I, just, I know it's that really is sad. But um, well, speaking, really, they've, now, they've now they've now redone it as a. It's not a collectible card game anymore. It's a. No, it's, not, it's not a CCG. It's a yeah. deck construction. TCG, yeah, yeah, yeah. TCG. yeah they've changed it from a CCG to a TC, to, to a TCG. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, you know, fortunate living in, in in the UK, we can actually get like old CCG games. Um, speaking wow. of those kinds of games, I managed to finally find what I was looking for. If you remember, before I left, uh, before we left for for Scotland, I was looking for yeah. a particular set of cards that I couldn't find anywhere. You guys had some a long time before, but um, but uh, okay. but what's his oh, name? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, who was it who bought them all? I don't know. It was the captain of the the, the, the Owen the, Owen Swat Owen yeah. yeah he went in and bought all your damn cards and I didn't have a single one I was so pissed off but I got them all here well not all of them but I got a whole bunch here so I've got a, 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 a I bought a bought the whole starter pack thing and it cost me like twenty five pounds I was really quite I was quite chuffed but awesome. you know speaking on 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 Cyberpunk you you you've been playing yeah. the, the, the the PC version of that game so you've been jamming up a, a storm with the PC version. You missed out on the PS4 and PS5, especially if you got a PS5. The haptic feedback and the responsive triggers. <gasps> you have no really idea cool. how awesome. It even Kez knows because I let her play with, with, when I was busy playing, I let her drive the car. I shot the guns and then I drove his car into the wall. <laughs> yeah. And I killed some people. And she was also like, this is so cool because when you aim, the the, the adaptive trigger on the left, when you, with your, your, your aiming trigger, basically, it tightens yeah. up. So... It, um, the, the the less skilled you are holding your rifle up, the harder it is to actually to to, to pull the trigger, right. to aim your, your your gun down, your, aim down your sights. The the more mm -hmm. skilled you get, the easier it gets to actually push the push the, the left trigger in. When you hold the right trigger in, it actually feels like if you squeeze it, uh, just just a little squeeze, you can feel it like you, you're squeezing a proper trigger for a gun. Wow. So you don't have to pull all the way back; you can just squeeze it, and the the it'll fire. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's really epic doing that. And then obviously driving. <laughs> <laughs> the the responsive trigger is you can accelerate it's tight and then when you shift yeah. gears it like it goes in every time you shift gears so it feels really cool so you think it always goes like this every single time you, you you're shifting gears and then your brakes are actually proper brakes so if you the harder you push the harder the car stops <laughs> sure. yeah. and you can so feel have, the, the resistance i have Sorry. a ps4 yeah i happen to have a ps4 the limited edition the five oh, million nice. right wow okay nice. good thing is i like pc i no, no. it's what i it's what i grew yeah. up on um uh -huh. it's what i enjoy um, yeah I, I i don't blame you at all yeah we're playing more pc games recently yeah. now as well 
um, since we got the the gaming rigs. Yeah. Um, we've mo mo mostly been on our PC. Like, if something for the PlayStation comes out, we we might play it every now and then. Mm. But mm. we're mostly sitting at our PCs now. Yeah. No, that's a lie. Kes, Kes sits and well, she lies down and watches sh TV shows on the PS5. Dude, but that's just um, Look, the PS5 is used for gaming. Don't don't get me wrong. We got a PS4. We've got a PS4 Pro. We've got a PS5. We've got all the all the fancy gadgets. Because you know, living up here, we actually managed to be able to afford them. But yeah. um, we did. We didn't get a PS5 for that reason. We got the PS5 for games like Gran Turismo 7, which is, I mean, um, when I get the game, I'm going to be really hungry. So excited. I'm gonna just be. I'm gonna be down. No one's gonna be able to even talk to me because I'm gonna be playing that game nonstop because it's it's yeah. Gran Turismo. That's my game. <laughs> so I, I got it for those kinds of games, for the games that are coming out exclusively for PlayStation Five, um, yeah. and, uh, like like that, and your God of Wars and your uh, Horizon Zero Dawns and things like that, where they're basically exclusive for to to, to PlayStation for any length of time, you know, and then only re uh, later released on 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 that. But also I got it for. We got the PS5 because of that responsive controller, because of the things that they can do and that they'll be able to do once they actually bring the PSVR 2 in. It's going to be unbelievable to feel what they can do with haptic feedback and um, and responsive triggers. I'm just I, I can't wait to see what they do. It's it's, it's going to be quite uh, unbelievable. I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to it. But PC, um, I grew up playing PCs as well. Um, I, I actually focus a lot more on my PC when it comes to gaming. Um, because there's a lot more to do on PC, you know. Uh, I've got you got things like Satisfactory that I can play, which I haven't stopped playing for a long time. <laughs> um, you've got your your strategy games, which is um, Kes is bread and butter. She loves her, her strategy games. Um, that's that that's like her thing. And then for me, it's my FPSs. I do I do like my my long story FPSs, the ones that take a long time to finish or are fully open world where I can do whatever the hell I want to. That's that's my yeah. thing. Yeah. I, because I get to build houses I don't know, and stuff and she hates did it. you ever play um, Uplink? No, I haven't ever played Uplink. Go and yeah. find Uplink. Go and find Uplink and play it. It's a it's an old hacking game. Um, oh, I know, I know that from, game. I recognize from that. From the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, yeah. It's very cool. Uh, it, it's very cool. So the hack, that was cool. I don't know if you can still get it, but like i don't know if you remember syndicate yeah in the 90s i love syndicate i love syndicate syndicate in the 90s you're building your own squad of hitmen and leveling them up. These, are, <laughs> this is, these are where my memories of, of gaming um started and yeah so it's mm. always just been, um pc gaming don't uh, forget earthworm gem sorry don't forget earthworm gem yeah earthworm gem the very first so 1986, Christmas 1986, I got a Sega, a Sega Master System. Oh, nice. <laughs> very, very first Sega console they brought out. And I hammered that thing for years um, until we got a PC. Um, so I'm not a, it's not like I don't like my consoles. That was the, the first memory I ever had of gaming. I would play that thing into the night. My parents bought me a TV <laughs> just so I could sit in my room and play my game. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, right, so I found Uplink Hacker Elite, and that's on GOG. Um, that's mm -hmm. the I think that's the latest one. That was or not the latest one. That was the one after the first Uplink, which was um, I think they have it on Steam actually. Yeah, the first, I keep the getting first. updates that it's that it's now available on Steam. Um, yeah, trust yeah. his weakness. Yo, it's not cheap, eh? Six ninety nine. <laughs> I mean, it's not expensive, but I, you'd think it'd be like like the the second one, which is like um, <laughs> five. <laughs> it's yeah. it's not terribly expensive though, but it's it, it looks interesting. It, I might just play this. I yeah, can't, and I can't uh, Hacknet. Kind of Hacknet, yes, I, I know Hacknet. That one I do actually know. My brother has and I played that game. I think he still has it on his PC actually. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's definitely more for the software developers though, because they they. My brother can code the crap out of that game. I, I, he, he showed me once, and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm a network techie, okay? All I know how to do right. is set up a decent network for you. <laughs> I wanted to be a hacker when I was little, but that's just because of the movie that came out. Because they made it look so cool and so fun. <laughs> but it's not I know, like that. I, know, I, I do the same thing, Liz. I do exactly the same thing. It's one of those... 
I know it's. I grew up. I know it's. It's a cultural touch point. I know it's famous. It's a cult classic, yeah. You actually have Angelina Jolie. Uh, Sherlock Holmes is in that movie. Um, what's his name? Johnny. Yeah. Johnny Depp. No. No, 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 no. The guy who plays Sherlock in um, 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 the TV series. Yeah. With Lucy um, Liu. Oh, I don't, I don't know, know his name, but I know he's from Eli Stone as well. Mm-hmm. Now, now I'm just going to have to Google. Um, <laughs> is the series. And it was Johnny... Johnny Lee Miller is his name. Johnny Lee Miller. Anyway, um, yeah, I that that movie, like the moment the moment you start learning computers, you mo- start realizing that those graphic interfaces <laughs> are just reject bad. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Robot, Mr. <laughs> Robot is the most show realistic, you should. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the most realistic you'll ever get. Is actual is code. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's real code. Because <laughs> I remember when I was watching it, I look at it in the way that like they go into the server room, and I'm like, that is not what a fucking server room looks like. No. And he's got that like <laughs> digital keyboard where he sits and he presses the buttons, <laughs> and that's way back then. No, I can't. Yeah, I can't do it. We watched it recently. We actually got it on Blu-ray because it was one of my favorite movies as a kid. It's a good movie, but you watch it, and you just giggle at. Like, all the different things that they had with the viruses going across the screen. It's like, that's not who's, what they do. Who's on my turf? Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, that was terrible. That was so... absolutely... I was thinking, what the hell? You know what? If you were, if there was another hacker hacking like that, you would not go, who's on my turf? My God. <laughs> you probably... If you were a hacker and you saw another hacker and you didn't know they were a hacker, you would think that they were actually someone that was trying to catch you and you'd fuck off out of that server so fast. <laughs> <laughs> None of a freaking battle between the TV series. So yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry, guys. I know. It's fine. I'm special to you. Can't get. It's not yeah, for it was, everyone. Not yeah, for me, for me, it's a funny. Exactly. For me, it's funny because I get to. I get to actually rip on it because when we when we were watching it and. They, they walked out into that server room i looked at that now obviously i'm 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 a network specialist and uh, uh, an it tech so that that's where my my knowledge actually lies and when, yeah. when they walked into that server room and the guy's sitting there and he's like all chilled out and he's got a t-shirt on and shorts i was okay i'm like yeah okay firstly you'd be freezing your hat off <laughs> you would not be wearing that most of us go into those rooms with a jacket on because we're not stupid <laughs> yeah and he's sitting there with like no jacket he's like and then he starts typing on this on this what all, all i can say it looks like a freaking apple <laughs> it looks like an apple ipad and he's busy typing on this thing i'm like that that's not real um that yeah. server room looks way too dark server rooms are not that dark generally they're quite well lit because you've got to see the server yeah. you're looking at because you each one of them's got a number and a code and an IP right, address I, I <laughs> are we what are, what is the uh SAE's policy on swearies ah uh, well you it. just heard me swear now so it's fine swear as much you know what fuck it swear <laughs> <laughs> there <Yeah>. you go <laughs> but no we don't have a policy on swearing um, we're well, actually going to bring our age restriction down to 16 because we realize that we don't really talk rude. We just swear a lot. <laughs> it's just swearies. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, no, because it wasn't 18, but we think we're going to, uh, I think we should bring it down to 16 because, you know, we only swear. It's not like we're like being bad people and doing naughty right. things. <laughs> so I know Comic-Con is, is real life this mm. year. Are you looking forward to going back to attending festivals properly and seeing everybody and all that obviously you're you're more the the back end side of the the mm. businessy side of things but i'm sure you're still excited in some way yeah we we probably won't do an icon this year purely because we still don't know what's happening with the regulations about people in attendance i um, was gonna ask yeah uh comic-con comic-con at stake big 
Comic Con tried last year. They they asked fans, "Do you want us to run an event?" They they definitely tried. They even ran a um, a distributed event in Cape Town uh, mm. last year. Um, so they're already um, yeah, that already lined up to have to have their event. Um, it's going to be interesting seeing that it's relocated. Uh, it's now it happening at. Um, out near Soccer City, um, where wow, the Rancho. That's a, that's a dis- oh, um, uh, I forget the name of the that place pl- now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's going to be there. It's not that place, yeah. And I think the while Gallagher worked, the thing they wanted was the food trucks, and Gallagher, yeah. from our experience at Icon, Gallagher does not budge on the food. We, we, Nazareth, even though you. they took all the halls bar one um <laughs> bar one so yeah. It was a big <laughs> yeah it was you they still can hold their food trucks um so uh shifting out to it'll uh i'd like to see what they do um yeah uh, but they're they're already picked i'm very keen to start seeing events um mm. i'm really keen to see how the events work out overseas as well um i don't know how long it's going to take to get back to a convention normal uh yeah. world cosplay summit um is doing a an event this year where teams can nice. go to japan um but japan's currently got very very strict rules mm. around quarantining etc and it's what it's february we don't know what's going to happen in three more months um so that's true i i would yeah i mean we were all geared for christmas to be fine for the world to start opening mm-hmm. and for travel to happen and everybody flying for christmas yeah. and omicron came up and we mm-hmm. just don't know the more people that need to get just more people need to get vaccinated to help stop these sorts of variants but we just don't know so i hope that it happens i saw i just got an email tonight that c2e2 is selling uh is starting to sell tickets for their event um yeah so yeah it's i i want conventions to come back because i want i want those experiences for people again it's just mm. going to be really interesting to see what changes could potentially make mm. And we want more icon. Yeah, I we come back down for a visit. We'd like to do it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We'd like to come down for a visit to actually come and see the or, or come during con season, which is generally yeah. winter in South Africa. So we'd like yeah. to actually hit con yes. season when we're when we're there because you know, yeah, get a couple of footages and things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll we'll be we'll be heading back towards a more traditional style of icon. Um, oh, nice. What I was trying to do, bringing guests in, etc. Those roles are now being filled by by Comic Con. Comic Con, yeah. Um, yeah. And to be honest, we can't compete with their budget. Uh, I I'd love to bring out Anthony Mackie. I'd love to. Uh, I mean, we might we might uh, bring Ray out again because um, we all love Ray. He's a and close now friend. <laughs> there's going to be a series. There's going to be a Rift War series. So. Oh really? He, <gasps> Is he bringing out another Rift War series? Mm-hmm. Joking? Is he, is he bringing out another? No, no, no. Got, announced, uh, got announced about two weeks ago. They so he told us a couple of years ago um, that he had signed a deal with CBD uh, CDEF Productions, and that okay. fell through after about a year, sadly. But they yeah, um, Ziff, they've the the team that's picked it up. They've picked up not only the first three Rift War, uh, of the Rift Wars, but they've picked up the three Empire novels. Oh, wow. So my guess Jeez. is they're going to be mixing the Empire series on Kilowan with the Rift War and be able to move back and forth because both of those stories happen in parallel. Yes, they do, so yeah. So it, it, it's better to do all six um, and be able to take from both of them rather than just trying to fill Kilowan backstory from yeah, Rift War, which is really good. Very difficult, yeah. But just makes it makes it richer. 
Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, you know, reading the books, you've got to actually go through obviously each one at a time. But if they can do them, you know, simultaneously, it actually gives it a good, it gives it a good feel. But is is is, is Vice going to be um, involved in it? Is he going to actually be like quite involved in the the, the show? His I hope he Facebook is because is that uh, based on recent announcements, he's going to be very busy. So I I imagine <laughs> that he would be story consultant. So. Yeah. Um, but you have showrunners for a reason yeah yeah exactly exactly no definitely you have showrunners for a reason it's exactly what they're there but i do hope that he's involved just so that you know he can say look mm. that's not what my story was about you need to you need to make sure that it is more oh. appropriate to what my book was actually you know? you just he's really very wanted. angry about rings of power you did you did um you did just remind me of something that uh um i'm gonna i'm gonna be terrible and i apologize but i need to mm. put it into my mind now because i need to send a message when when I'd heard about the previous attempt at the series, I made a certain request of Ray um, about a specific thing if the show got made, and then it didn't happen. Now the show is getting made. I'm going to make sure I, I send that request in, but I can't tell you what it is. Um, well, and that's why I, I, he did agree, and his daughter even wanted it as well because uh, we were having dinner together. Um, yeah, all right. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm, that's guys, just mean. I'll just put you guys all up, and you have no idea what I'm talking about. But I can't. no, we don't. Yeah, right. <laughs> you can't because it's. it's, just, it's you it's just reminded me that I did ask of that thing. It's like, oh crap, that's now back on the table. I now I need to send them this. Mm, mm. Okay, well, no, that's fine. Um, I understand. And um, for the, those of you who are watching, I'm Just sorry. Just pretend you didn't hear it. As simple as that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Les can do that sometimes. He he, he likes to he likes to just like oh. throw things out there for you not to know what's going on. He goes, oh, this, this, but I can't tell you. Yeah, I'm he does actually make often enough. <laughs> he used to do it to us often. Um... <laughs> yeah, so... So on, on that note, though, on the note of novels and books and all of that, yep. uh, you remember my mother wrote a novel. So we're 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 looking at self-publishing because publishers oh, are so freaking hard yes. to find. Why is this in the podcast? Yes. Hey? Why is this in the podcast? Congrats. Because it's it's interesting news about fantasy novel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, um, so yes, for those of you who don't know, my mother is a fantasy novelist. So um, she actually writes books on fantasy. We may just bring her on at one point so she can actually have a little talk about her book. Um, and about her geekishness because she's a geek as well. I thought I'd let you know that we are we are looking at self-publishing because it's really it's quite difficult for her to actually get a, a decent That's publisher, awesome. and it's best to actually do it that way. So I, I was like, maybe, oh, as much as I can. <laughs> maybe reach out to Marie Mullaney, um, Marie and Donald Mullaney. Um, Marie and Donald Mullaney. They were very big geeks in the South African scene. They've moved over to Norway. Um, oh, the Donald thing. Donald's yeah. been publishing his works on Amazon for a while, and mm. Marie's just published her first book. So, so they, can, they can actually give us some good ideas on what to what to do. Well, if you go and check, uh, actually, uh, Just in Time Worlds is Marie's YouTube channel. If I got that right, because um, she does a lot of stuff about world building, um, and like to the point of. How do you handle the economics of your of your cities and your That's okay. just in time, yeah just in time worlds uh, is her channel on YouTube. Uh, oh, there. Okay, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, and she's on Twitter. Uh, so yeah, if you go through her vids, uh, she was also doing a um, I think she was doing a podcast series with Maxwell Alexander Drake. Um, nice, nice. As well, who's a who's an author? He does a lot of, um, a lot of fantasy fiction writing panels mm. at Gen nice. Con, at San Diego Comic Con, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, nice. yeah, um, so Marie might be a good person to reach out to. I definitely, well, I'll, <laughs> sorry, I get like that sometimes. Um, I'll definitely do that. I'll speak to I'll speak to my mother and tell her to get in get in touch. And we might even speak to her, speak to them ourselves. It's always good yeah. to get some different perspectives from different people that do different things like that. We can have them on the podcast. See, it's like it's it's full on networking here. And for those of you who are watching, any of you who are aspiring novelists or anything like that, mm -hmm. yes, you've heard a chess. Les, knows, exactly Les knows the people. He's hooked up. <laughs> no, He's that's hooked exactly up. it. That's, um, 
Mm. No, they, the content creator space is collaboration sharing. When people start um, building silos and not being willing to share, it stymies the entire process. Exactly, and it turns it turns it into into uh, well, uh, it, it just gets boring. I mean, you look you at. Remember when we first started? You gave us a lot of our ideas and said, "Why don't you try this? Or why yes. don't you speak to this person? Or go do this?" And here it, we it are. Helped five us, years it helped later. us actually grow yeah. into our, own, our own channel. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And we find it. We finally actually found our niche. We found our, our little our little space to sit in, you know, where it's like it's partial gaming and you know uh podcasts that way we've got like a nice mix people can see me oh. in my, my element and see kids and her element and then see us both together in, in an element <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. this is yeah it there's it doesn't it, it sounds it's going to sound corny and hammy but mm -hmm. um there's an analogy of uh candles when a lit candle lights another candle it doesn't lose anything it doesn't take away anything from it but you now have two candles exactly and the light just gets brighter and brighter <laughs> see i can make it corny yeah, too <laughs> but that's very chicken soup for the soulish tribe <laughs> but it's the it's a simple way of explaining it's, the concept it's a good analogy though it is a very good analogy um and that's also i mean like in the music scene it was the same thing you know um we we when I was when I was playing with Third Road, we 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 had endless issues trying competing with other bands because they were always trying to oh that's my light that's my limelight I'm the famous yeah. one you're nothing and it's like why are you even doing that There's enough for everyone you know a lot of people yes. want to actually be musicians and a lot of people are talented let their talent grow why stymie why stifle what they actually have yeah so I I, I hundred percent agree with you and it's the same thing in the content content creator world. Um, there are content creators out there that will actually go full freaking pull the ladder up uh, underneath them and they will yeah. literally punch down if they wanted to and I don't agree with that I think that you should be helping them Actually, now with that law that passed oh wow that's that's I think it's still I think it's still proposed but it's ridiculous it's it is yeah. it's, it's so stupid it's like Okay, well now now we're gonna make sure that you can't create content in, in South Africa, or we're gonna make sure that you all get VPNs. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So for, so for anybody listening that doesn't know what we're talking about, um, mm. the film uh, the film board in the South Africa <laughs> is film publishing board yeah. is has proposed a law where every piece of video content that you record and want to publish needs to be submitted to them for review first. I still don't see how they're going to get through it all because there's so yeah, many content creators that. that do create videos on a daily basis. The logistics of that is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. For, I mean, the, the stats of how much content is actually created and uploaded to YouTube every day they won't have time to sit there and watch all of these things so it's going to end up being sampled or no we're not going to let you publish it until it's the logistics of it are mind-boggling and are not feasible um, not regardless all, no. of the, regardless of the spirit of this thing so yeah no i 100 agree because the whole thing is if you look at it from that standpoint especially what you're saying over there um it it, it, it essentially it's going to if it gets stuck in the, the stuck by the wayside you send a video in all right you're a small content creator you send a video into the fpb it's going to take months to years for them to clear that video so that you can actually put it up you it's basically just going to kill every bit of the industry in south africa where youtubers will no longer be able to create videos and people like ourselves who live in the uk we can come down to south africa and record the events and things like that we can take all of that footage and upload it here because yep. we've got, we don't have that rule. There's no law like that in in the United Kingdom, because yep. they don't believe in 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 making sure that you cannot actually make a life for yourself on mm. YouTube and things like that. It's it's really stupid. I think the the, the South African government is trying to actually just make money, and that's yeah, I don't. Is. I think I don't think they thought it through. No, I truly don't think they thought. No, I don't think so at all. I think they, they should definitely. I think they think, think that the content creators are like a few, maybe like ten or twenty, and they went, ah, oh, it's fine. We'll just 
Well, look at this, and then they don't actually realize how many people mm -hmm. in South Africa make content. Yeah, yeah. there's thousands. Oh. There's novelists. There's like, I can grant it. There, there, there's a different <laughs> kind of publication. Yeah. But I mean, you've got, you've got, you've got podcasters that go on to things like Spotify and things like that. You've got YouTubers. You've got uh, Twitch streamers. You've got um, artists artists like uh musical mm. artists as well you know they all have to put their crap through the fpb and yeah. <laughs> there are a lot <laughs> it makes no sense, makes no sense. Yeah. yeah not at all not at all i agree is there any games or movies that you're excited to see this year if you have time of course i mean i'm always a fan of what marvel brings out um the i was actually having a conversation with um, with someone we're talking about the trailer for doctor strange uh, the new doctor strange movie and what i figured out is i the trailers don't actually spoil stuff for me because marvel has gotten really really good at um not including everything in the trailer and even going to the point of digitally removing characters yeah. from specific scenes there was a i don't know if you saw there was an incident uh, jimmy kimmel pointed it out on um spider-man no way home that they had a right. slow mo that slow motion shot where all of the spideys are fighting the sinister six yeah. um yeah. and then down in the bottom right hand corner something punches the lizard but you don't see what it was mm. and they, somebody actually spotted it because you actually see the lizard jumping and then oh and he went well either um that's the invisible woman which means the fantastic four are now here or you've digitally removed a character and it was it was <laughs> toby mcguire's it was toby actually Maguire's andrew Spider -Man. That they oh, digitally andrew removed. yeah because he was the he fought the lizard yeah. Toby Maguire yes. was, yeah, was yeah. Green Goblin. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Spoilers for anybody who's not seen. My apologies. We all knew. We all knew. Anyone who didn't know that that Toby Maguire's Spider-Man and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man were going to be in this, if they didn't know that, I'm sorry. We can't help them. Then, then they, 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 this is, they may not have looked closely enough at the rest of the movies. <laughs> yeah. This is what I like about Marvel, though. Then they're, they're not afraid mm -hmm. to tell the story for a bigger picture yeah. um so i'm now like the fact that in the trailer there is a character that was created in the animated series in the what if series that's that's incredible they're knitting all this stuff together but now yeah. i don't know i don't even know what else is they're potentially capable of because the way they've mm -hmm. gone with um scarlet witch so, slight spoiler, if you've not seen um, the Scarlet Witch and Vision series. Guys, um, lucky years if you haven't seen it and you want to. So. The, at the very, very end, the final scene where she gets hold of a certain book and what that <laughs> book means. For anybody who's read the comics, they know exactly what that book is. Mm -hmm. um, but now you've got the multiverse and then you've got Kang coming in um I, I i just it's now at a point where it's so nebulous that i could think of all of the things but i don't know what they're gonna pick and i don't know what yeah. they're gonna do because they've got more movies coming out so marvel i'm i now the willing suspension of disbelief is what you need to be able to enjoy these movies so it you turn off the critical mind you just enjoy it for for what it is that's yeah. where i am now for, for star wars my my partner loves like these ridiculous um police dramas and stuff like that and <laughs> having worked for for a period of time as a comms officer in the police i know the procedure and it's like no that's wrong that just no this doesn't <laughs> but with marvel i i turn that i turn that part off um, there are to. certain reasons for the shows <laughs> they get me right and it's like you know what I'm prepared to let you do your thing and whatever you want to do. And I'm just going to enjoy it. So yeah. Marvel's got a good slate of movies. Uh, Marvel movies for 2022. Marvel's got a good slate. 
Um, yeah. Like Love and Thunder, Morbius. The Morbius one could be interesting because it's more of a, a Sony movie than a Marvel movie. Um, there's going to be another animated Spider-Man. Batman's coming out. I, wa- I cannot wait to see Robert Pat- Patterson as Batman. I I'm really still not want- sure about that one. Hmm? I'm still not sure about that one. So what I would suggest is look up Robert Pattinson's IMDb. There is... Actually, I'll do it for you. Because there are a couple of movies where he is amazing as an actor. Wait, doesn't Morbius fight against Blade? Yeah. Yeah, so... Well, so... Morbius... Morbius is a... Kind of an anti-hero. Because he was... He fell victim to... A vampiric curse type thing. Yeah, yeah. But he was never the villain. He was never truly a villain. It was always that this thing inflicted... Was inflicted upon him. Um... Mm. And but, we know Blade's coming into the MCU. Yes, well, well, I mean, he is a Marvel character. He has to come to the MCU eventually. Oh, so he's already been there. He's already been introduced. Really? What? Yeah. Where? Into the Spider Verse? Spoil- <laughs> massive spoilers, particularly if you haven't seen the Eternals. Uh, okay. The very last of the Eternals. It's, it's not going to hurt me if you, I, I wasn't planning on You're watching welcome it, so. to say it. You're okay. welcome to, to, to say it. The very last scene of the Eternals has Dane Whitman, uh, who is the Black Knight in the comics. Oh, yeah? About to pick up the Ebon Blade, the Ebony Blade, which is the, the, the demonically possessed sword that the Black Knight uses. Mm-hmm. And he's about to pick it up, and a voice off screen says, you don't really want to grab that sword, do you? Yeah. And that's <laughs> Blade speaking mm. to him. But it's... I wonder who they're going to use for Blade, though. Yeah, but... Um, so, <laughs> by bringing in the mystical, by bringing in Morbius, they can start going... Um, mm. Oh, and by the way, with the Scarlet Witch in that particular book, they can start going some of the mm. demonic vampire type things, Yeah, which yeah. is the rise of the Midnight Suns storylines in the comics where you've got uh would you, yeah go check that out anyway um <laughs> yeah got rings of power coming out i'd like I'm, I'm looking forward to it but i don't think that's coming is that coming out this year uh, i believe it is i think so but okay. uh, me personally i'm not looking forward to it but that's only because i'm a hardcore Tolkien fan <laughs> and i know that they're not taking anything out of any of the other Tolkien things so i'm sort of like i'm, I'm on the uh nah it's fine i'll pass <laughs> right but right. i've passed on a lot of things uh, though. maybe if you watch it and like it we'll watch it um <laughs> well all right so an, an admission i was very much a hardcore canon guy so reading my comics i was always well this is canon this is mm. uh this is the way that it is i don't know if you remember that the the tv show hercules with kevin sorbo and Ed, the one that gave rise to he's <laughs> like <laughs> well, yes. i couldn't stand it i could not stand it because <laughs> these were not the stories that i knew of greek myth I was like yeah. well that's obviously rubbish um the turning point for me was the x-men movie in 2000 because when this thing's coming out now and there's going to be Wolverine there's going to be Cyclops and and I had to talk to myself and realize look there's 50 years 40 years of X-Men they're not going to get it all in 90 minutes which means they're going to have to change stuff yeah and that prepped me to accept that the thing that they're going to do is not necessarily a thing that I know but I can see if I can enjoy it anyway. Uh, Neil Gaiman said something else as well. Somebody made a comment, um, the ocean at the end of the lane, somebody made a stage play of that in London. And they'd read the book and they went and saw it and said, but it's not the same thing. And he replied with something quite quite insightful, which is Neil's way. He said, to replicate a book on stage wastes what you can do on stage yeah when you have whatever the medium is use that medium 
to its best extent. To replicate a movie in a book ruins what a book can give. Each of these mediums mm. has their own pluses, their own minuses, they've got their own strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. So when you've got something there, lean into that, lean into the strengths, mm. which does mean, well, I can do more with these stories. I can do something more with it. I can be more visually rich. Um, and those those two things, which are bookended by about 20 years, <laughs> um, well, 15 years worth, made me realize that there there can be different interpretations of these things, Yeah. which does not mean that the original is not the thing that I love, but I would like the opportunity to enjoy something else now, which might be mm. another interpretation of this thing, which I can take or leave. It doesn't detract yeah. from the fact that that thing was there and it was good and I love it. Yeah, that's that's I, that, that's where, like, for example, me, if, if, if I'm not going to do something like, for example, I'm really not keen on watching the, the, the Rings of Power. So what I'm going to do yeah. is what I always do. Again, I'm going to read my books and everyone's allowed to do their own thing. So that's why I don't yeah. mind. If you if you enjoy the, the, the show, go ahead. The, the yeah. life's too short. Life is too short to actually yes. to 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 sit and say to someone else you can't do it because i don't like it do what you do, do it. Yes. you live your life do what you want to do if you want to go go and jump off a bridge naked with with um with jump I mean, like bungee jump off a bridge naked you go right the whole head <laughs> everyone's got their own opinion and and everyone's yeah. got the right to be and do whatever they want to in that yeah. aspect you know and and that's why i say life's too short go for it it's just don't, me, I'm going to read my books. <laughs> don't, uh, what's the phrase? Don't yuck someone's yum. Exactly. You, I mean, you can yuck it for yourself, that's but that's phrase. that's it's a very good phrase. Yeah, yuck it for yourself, but not not for them. Don't don't yeah. make them feel bad for for, for eating their yum. That's it. Yeah, like don't yuck someone's Kez, yum. That's your yum. Things, that's cool. Exactly. Kids eat things that I could never eat. You know, um, there, there are some things that I love haggis. I haggis love haggis. haggis. Kiz, look at that face. Look at that face. She look hates haggis. Look she Kez's hates face. haggis. She cannot stand haggis. Me, I tasted it for the first time up here in Scotland because you, you know, haggis anywhere else around the world is nothing in comparison with where it comes from. And I had haggis here for the first time, and I was blown away. And whenever I get the chance to, I will have haggis. So he I love haggis. it on everything. No, I, I love it. Almost. I've everything. had it on pizza. I've had it on burgers. I've had it on quite a few things. Almost. Have you tried a haggis burger? It's a beef patty oh. with haggis on it. So it's like a, it's like, you know, but there's you also your... like the pizza one is the like little, it's, it kind of looks like mint, but it's yeah, yeah. haggis. Well, that's what haggis that's is. All, that's what haggis <laughs> is. It's spicy mints is what it comes down to. Yeah. It's boiled know. into sheep's stomach. That's the. <laughs> also, yeah, a, sausage. a sausage is made out of the intestine. Exactly. Um, Buddha is how the intestines of a, pit, of a pig as far as I know. Yeah, so, you know it's 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 no different from that. It's just it's how you and like I said, I love my haggis. Kez can't stand yeah. it; she won't eat it at all. Um, but it's because it's, it's too peppery for me. Yeah, and it's also like she she can eat, she eats things like like um, she can eat bananas. You can, you know, I can't stand them. The, I, I I I like gag really? at, the, at the I can't stand bananas. I gag at uh, bananas. That's how much I don't like them. Um, and and uh, but she she hates olives. I like olives. You know, it's 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 everyone's got their own thing. Then that's where the whole point. Doesn't like Vampire Diaries. I like Vampire Diaries. There you go. I, I'm not a big fan of uh, all oh, of Vampire man. Diaries. Yeah, <laughs> give me give me Anne Rice vampires any day. I like my Anne Rice vampires. They're good vampires. They're they're not good as in they're good guys, but they're good. They're they're well they're well, you know, rounded characters as it were. Um, each character, like Lestat, has got his own special story. If you read the books, you really get in depth as to who Lestat is. I mean, like the Queen of the Dan movie has nothing on the book. Oh my God! The, the depth that you go I in. I read that book. <laughs> she, she actually read that book and she loved it. That book is amazing. Um, yeah, it is. I, I kind of lost. I kind of lost the way after uh, when it got to uh, Tale of the Body Thief. Um, after you know, I never, that, saw, I never read that. Uh, yeah. I've never read that. I've read the Interview with the Vampire, and I've read the the, the Queen of the Dam. I wanted to read the Vampire Man, but I've never gotten around to that either. Um, but th th I don't know about the Body Thief. I don't know about the Tale of the Body Thief. I've never heard. Of it. I, I I know about it. 
I know that it's about uh, someone jumping uh, jumping into his. Uh, I think it was Lestat's body, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I remember there was a, there was a story about it, but apparently it was was way too out there for most people, and um, it wasn't really very successful. So mm. it's just sad that, that we're not going. I mean, I don't think she was ever going to write another vampire novel, but it's sad that she passed away. So, so yeah, you know, uh, rest in peace, Anne Rice. You know, and then you need to take uh, you need to do a a, a geek taj to Louisiana. Go down to New Orleans and go to the house. Definitely. Oh my God, how I would want to go to that house. Jeez, like that would be so epic to actually go and see the house that 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 she. They actually filmed there, didn't they? They modeled, they they, they built around that house. I think and they did. They, modeled, they yeah. did the movie. I think you're right. It. I stand to be correct, but I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. I would, I would love to. Would absolutely love to. It sucks. I hate these short podcasts. <laughs> we got to make these things longer. We really do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm sure. I'm sure Les wants to get some rest. Shame. <laughs> he already looks like his eyes are closing on him. <laughs> It is a, it is, I have had a long day. Yeah. I think we'll, we'll let you go though. We're not going to be like, we're not going to be mean. We can always um, have you back again. We can always yeah, have you I'd back love to. Again. Any, anytime you guys want to chat, I'm happy to chat. Absolutely. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll obviously, we got to, we got to figure out where, or we, you got to tell us where our, tell our fans where they can find you, if there's anywhere they can find you. In I don't want to be found. Don't come find, no. What? Not no, that kind of no. fine. Where they can no, find social media. Are you interested? I fine. Then um, no one gets to come to Icon. The Geek X actually uh, the Geek XP <laughs> website is currently about undergoing a relaunch. Um, so that's going to be up soon. That will be geekxp.com. Um, that okay. will probably be up during the course of March. Um, cool. where I finally got the .com domain. Um, so oh, I have nice. the .com on the website here today. Uh, nice. If you really want to follow me on Twitter, um, I am Les Allen underscore AUS uh, on Twitter. I tend to spend more time on Twitter. Um, I'm away from Facebook now. I I need to be on Facebook mm -hmm. for for work stuff. Um, you can check out Icon uh, Comics and Games Convention on Facebook as well. Uh, mm -hmm. There haven't been any updates the last couple of years because of COVID but uh, yeah those are the places where you can generally find it cool alright and guys just so you know Icon when it does come back we will definitely push it because we're going to want to go so we might we might just awesome. get some tickets and fly down to South Africa and go and say hi to well, our family as well because <laughs> it is where we come from <laughs> but, but also Icon definitely was, to the friends also Icon was one of the first events that we went to when it was still in that little hall Jabuna, all pushed together, him. yeah. I've been sandering him, <laughs> and and we loved it. So we will always go back to Icon. Yes, Probably. every single time. It was one, of, one of the first. Back. Yeah, it was definitely. We, we definitely will be. But anyway, guys, that that is Les. He is definitely someone that you're gonna want to chat to if you ever get a chance to, and you ever meet him at one of the cons. He's he's he, he will like I do talk your ear off. <laughs> but anyway, Les, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much for entertaining our guests. It has been a wonderful day, as always. Um, it just sucks that it has to end. Um, Angel, have you got anything to say? I love it when she does that, because then I don't know what to say afterwards. Keep watching so we can make 40 more episodes. Yes. Awesome. I like All right, that. Guys, if you liked that video, hit the like button, just like that, and tell us why. If you didn't like the video, hit the down like button and tell us why, because then we can improve. And even if you just want to be, uh, leave a big fuck you, we don't care, because, well, we don't care. Bad. Or just say hi, because we don't mind that either. Anyway, guys. What, is, what was the old line? Button. If you like it, tell your friends. If you don't like it, tell everyone. Exactly. Exactly. Remember to hit that subscribe button as well. You know, if you, if you really liked us, hit that subscribe button. We would like a few more subscribers. It would be nice. But anyway, guys, as always, remember. Keep it Keep it Bye.